So how does it feel to make history in Massachusetts' first small glove Muay Thai fight? You know, you know that's crazy. I, I keep forgetting that like this is a this that that this was a historic fight. Um, feels great, man, and especially because my coach was the first professional to do it, and he won by uh, TKO. And uh, now I'm the first amateur to do it, and I won by TKO. So it's, uh, it came in full circle, and it's uh, it's beautiful. So you came out with a Superman punch, and it takes a very certain person to start with a Superman yeah, punch. Yeah. Was that the plan, or were you just like, fuck it, we ball? Uh, shit, fuck it, we ball, man. And I'm pretty, uh, I'm actually upset because uh, they were good night. <laughs> um, that's nice. Man, congrats, man. Hey, thank you. Hey, dude, you killed that killer's over there. <laughs> Mike, next so, time, next time, this, this should have been a featured prelim, man. I, listen, before the fight, I remember I told you I was going to yeah. try to oh, win, yeah, I know. but I made a promise because Will asked like when he got on the card, he said, yeah. I'd be the first fight of the That's night. Right. So then when I did the interview yesterday, yeah. I was like, I might change the order. Yeah. I texted him last night and they're like, it's kind of fuck him up. He's been thinking. It's no, that's okay. Fight. Yeah, that's alright. You were game, but that's alright. I appreciate it though. Start off with a bang. Next time, let's you know. Go. Next time. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm sorry. Can you, can oh. you repeat that question? Sorry, yeah, my bad. I'll just go to the next yeah. one. My bad. <laughs> so you started to slow down a little bit at the end of the first round, and then you came back fully energized second round. How was that end of the first round? Yeah, end of the first, um, I was a little more winded than I anticipated, but then. Literally, uh, that one minute felt like a lifetime. So, you know, I got, I got my breath back and I was ready to go. All right, congratulations. Thank you. So how did the crowd and the energy feel tonight in Plymouth Memorial Hall? Oh, I freaking love it, man. I mean, I came to two of these fights that I watched by my boys, uh, Jake Hicks and Bond, Jacob Bone, could fight here all the time. But, fuck, man, it was just, it's just sick to actually get in there. And, I mean, uh, I mean, just feel the hall, feel the Coliseum. Get, get, they get under you a little bit. I mean, I really could uh, hear them and feel them when I got a couple shots off. I felt them. Didn't even know I hit the kid with a freaking head kick really until I freaking heard the crowd freak the fuck out. So, I mean, that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> during, I think, the second round, he threw like 20 rounds kicks to the body in a row. What were you thinking during that point? Oh, when he was throwing the round kicks to me or me? He point? was throwing at you. He was just going over and over and over the same spot. I figured but he was like, ah, oh, this kid's not defending him, but... I mean, maybe I should have backed the hell up, but I mean, I, uh, at one point I was just like, this, this kid is really gonna keep fucking, they weren't really hurting at all. I kind of just realized at one point when the crowd started making noise, like, oh, they think this is hurting me. But it really wasn't affecting me at all. He was just throwing it, hitting my, my arm. And I, think, I don't know if he thought it was affecting me, but I mean, I don't know. I mean, something cool just happened up here, which is, he's out of the cage, so. Uh, that's a penalty from the commission. <laughs> And what would you say your key to victory was tonight? Uh, just training, man. This is a freaking pre preparation that got me here. I mean, I didn't freaking, there was no cheat code. I didn't think of anything too crazy before this fight. I didn't really, I stuck with my game plan as much as I could. I knew that freaking shot was going to be there multiple times over and over again. Kind of whenever I wanted to shoot it. Two times I shot it, I didn't really like how I shot it. I think, I think he stuffed it. Yeah, and I mean, if there was freaking, if it was a pro level fight, he had shots where he could throw some knees there. So I mean, I gotta clean up my shots, but I forgot the question. But <laughs> all good. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you so much, brother. So your fight was so fast, I completely missed it. So walk me through the fight. What happened? Well, I, you know, I, I get out there, and like I said, the, the plan was to take him down. So I start kicking his lead leg. You know, he started adjusting, and I saw his chin right down the middle. And I saw it, and you know, I've been training so much for this, praying for God to, you know, give me the the the, the reflexes I needed to do what I did, and He did, you know. And it's the glory is all to God, not mine. Did you wish the fight went a little bit longer to show more of your skills to the crowd? I did, I did. You know, I wanted to show off a little bit of wrestling because I've been working so much on that. But you know, I'm happy I got the TKO, so <laughs> that's it. And is winning everything you thought it would be? Yeah. <laughs> All right, congratulations. Thank you very much. So aside from the DQ, how'd you feel about your performance this fight? Oh, I felt like, yo, bro, like my striking was on it. Ah, 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 you know, I was throwing, ah, 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 I was, ah, you know, I was throwing my shits, bro. But, you know, second round, I got kind of sloppy. Then he ended up getting the full mount, kind of, kind of, shit. He rocked me a couple times on the ground. My, my cranium circled a little bit, you know, I had some birds spinning up top. 
uh, some stars or whatnot. But you know, I recovered, made it to the third round. You know, got the you know fucking got the DQ. Fuck it, <laughs> it's a win. A win's a win, bro. Uh, so we have the uh, New England Amateur Featherweight rankings up. I'm gonna give you some names. Tell me if anyone pops out. Let's oh, yeah. see. We have Dan Butain, Fred Allen Safir, Jackson Campbell, Fuck him up. Mike Woods, Fuck him up. Dan Jefferson, Fuck him up. Julian Carrington. I ain't scared. I don't even know who those guys are. <laughs> For real? Oh, fuck. Nah, never mind. <laughs> I'll fight Mikey Woods. What Jiggy? Jiggy. Yeah. Anybody. All of them. All of them. Uh, Give me like, give me like, give me like a couple months, and I'll come back with my wrestling better. Tell me, just don't shoot on me, please. Don't <laughs> hurt me. Fuck. I'll, I'll strike though. Young nigga like me will strike. I'll fuck y'all up. I'm talking shit. I don't even know. I'm stay humble, cause if I get my ass knocked down, I'll be mad. <laughs> like McGregor said, first person to shoot's a dusty bitch. That's Congratulations. Uh huh. There you go. So, by the time I looked over at the TV, the fight was already over. So, walking through the fight, what happened? So uh, the plan was to go out there, you know, command the middle, command the center, um, you know, uh, see what he had for his striking, and then come over the top, you know, uh, hit him with a jab, overhand. Um, he weaved outside of that, and from there I shot and uh, got him against the cage. Um, started punching him in the face, he started grabbing the inside of my glove, um, kept punching him, got my hip in between his hips, uh, dragged him down to the ground, started grabbing my arm. Um, my gloves again once uh, he felt the punches coming and I just rained. It must, I must have counted like 20 punches unanswered. I'm like, ref, when are you gonna come in and step in? <laughs> yeah. Is there anything in this fight that you didn't, or you weren't able to show a case that you wanted to? Like, uh, to be honest, like, like I said, I wanna, I wanna be the most well-rounded fighter I can be, but I love striking. I love the strike, I love the punch and kick, I love just the art of it. This is why I do this. I don't like hurting people, I like the art. I like to be able to move my body. Like I played multiple sports, uh, football, basketball, track. I watch all these amazing athletes and the things that they can do, and I want to be a part of them. And any names you want to call out? Anybody in the fucking 85, man. I'm tired of you motherfuckers ducking me, man. Stop trying to make this like this illustrious fucking amateur career, bro. It's either we fight or go fucking pro. Stop playing games. Like I'm trying to go pro. I'm not trying to mess around over here. Like either we fight, or get the fuck out the way. All right, congratulations. Yep. Phil, how are you feeling right now? Dude, it's like we're best friends. We're always talking like before <laughs> and after every fight. You're my good luck charm. So you told, <laughs> you told me a couple of days ago how excited you were to throw knees to the head and elbows. I might be wrong, but I didn't think I saw a single one. What happened there? No, I threw some elbows on the ground. I threw some on the ground. You might have missed it. That's no, so my angle then. Yeah, did you catch the walkout though? That Tell was awesome. How fucking epic was that? And sorry about the delay with that. They, the guy was looking at my pinky nail and he's like, oh, it's a little too long. And the searcher for clip was like, dude, what if I just fucking bite it off? <laughs> Am I good now? Yeah. And then I went in there and did my thing. But yeah, I do a couple of those and I wait till uh, I see the tape. And we were talking about how Giles theme, Giles like that American the Japanese made. And. <laughs> Being the American the Japanese think you are, and I see you got the American Italian shorts. Oh. So, what's the American energy just flowing through you right now? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> really emerged the, the Bambino. Even though I didn't get that home one hit I want, but you know, I still got the win, got the choke. Uh, that's all that matters. You know, I get to see fine people after this as well, so it's just, I'm enjoying every moment of it. And on when he was choking you, and you said it was close. Yeah, I don't know, I was close. Were you afraid that he was gonna finish it, or? No, no, I, my last fight, I got caught in like three of them, you know? And plus, I feel like now that I shaved my head, it really does help, <laughs> I swear to God. Excuse me. And you're very proud of your team, Sid Tong and Broadway. Broadway. So how does it feel to bring a win back to the gym oh, and just amazing. be representative of the gym? It feels amazing. I mean, honestly, more importantly, it matters more to Sid Tong because they're the one that, that bred me to who I am now, but I do have to give credit to Broadway Jiu Jitsu because I have been training there quite a lot, especially with the grappling. Like, like I told Matt, you see, you know, when I fought Danny, he just exploited so much of my flaws, and I was like, yo, I gotta learn what you know, and now I know what they know now, so they become uh, great teammates and great friends of mine too. They're in the crowd too, cheering me on. So that loud pop you had, that was probably most of them. And after the fight, as you were kneeling, just taking everything in, what was going through your head? 
It's finally here. Everything you ever wanted from being a high school bus football player to, you know, not making it to college football, not, you know, um, being a, bo a boxer, a pro boxer, but we had our last chance at being a professional MMA fighter and we did it. So I'm truly living my dream right now and I couldn't be any happier. Congratulations. Very happy for you. Thank you. Oh, can I just give one more shout out? Yo, to my boys, Jedi Knights Academy on PlayStation 4. We did it, baby. I'll see y'all later on tonight. I was going to make a joke about that gremlin photo at the weigh-ins, but holy fuck, that was a fight of the year contender. What went into that from both sides that made that fight so exciting? Uh, I think he, we were both just fucking game, you know? Like, you could tell, like, he was ready for a war, a dog fight, and I was just ready. I know, I'm always ready for a dog fight. It's probably, like, I get way too caught up in that. I just love it, you know? Uh, my third round, my coach was like, how are we doing? And I was like, I love this shit. And I'm like, spit <laughs> blood at him. <laughs> he was like, oh, my God. On the numbers, if I was very close, you had 88 significant strikes landed. He had 87. You had the one takedown. Were you expecting the fight to be that close? I did not. Like I said, I, he was a lot... A lot more well prepared and better than I thought he was. You could tell, like when he moved, transferred to Syndicate, he's he's a lot better than what his record shows. And when they announced it was a unanimous decision, didn't announce that you were the winner yet. What was going through your minds? That it could have gone either way, but I thought that I did enough to just win the fight. And after that fight, that makes a big statement. Is there anyone that you want to fight after this now? Uh, no, no one's really in mind. Uh, just gonna take some time off. I obviously, I took some damage, so I'm gonna heal up and come back for, you know, September, November, whatever. So, that's, no one's in my mind right now. Alright, congratulations. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. What would you say is the biggest lesson that you learned from your uh, losing streak that you applied to this fight? Um, I just need to believe in myself and not listen to what other fucking people say. <laughs> um, and just keep showing up for myself and not showing up for, you know, I think a lot of people think that I'm like maybe still fighting because I just want to, but I love to fight. It's who I am. Um, I have a really fantastic team behind me who, you know, keeps me driven and doesn't let the losses affect me mentally, even though some days they do. Uh, but I have a really great team and I'm, you know, grateful for them. They always show up for me, so I want to make sure I show up for them too. So your opponent seemed to be a little upset that the ref ended, where it ended the fight where it did. Would you agree with the ref ending it there? I mean, I think that any time, I mean, that girl's tough and I've seen her fight and she's gone all the way to the bell in a lot of her fights and she's really tough. So I think maybe she mentally thought she could keep going, but the ref was just being safe. Uh, it wouldn't have mattered either way. I would have kept taking her life. And how are you celebrating tonight? Um, I'm going to go home and eat pizza and hang out with my dog. Awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anything from this fight that surprised you? Uh, about my opponent? Yeah. Um, not much of the fact that he came really prepared to fight and, and win today. And that's what I really know about him. Um, he was a different fighter, but um, to me, I just feel that his, his levels to this, and I knew I was, the, uh, I was going to be the better fighter. Regardless of how, how bad he wanted it, I knew I was going to be the better fighter. Yeah. And you mentioned your age. You're a bit older than a lot of other fighters. How long do you want to keep fighting for? Um... I can't really put a time limit on that. It's really up to me whenever I, I def feel that um, I'm ready to slow slow down. But right now, I'm, I'm pretty much um, having fun with it. It keeps me it keeps me alive. It keeps me going. You know what I'm saying? Um, it keeps me in shape, uh, and I, and it, it helps it helps me take care of my body, man. So that's that that that's what, what it is for me. So. Um, when I'm ready to stop, then you know it's all it's all on my timing. But right now, I'm just I'm just enjoying the roller coaster of life. You know, um, nobody know where their life is headed. You know, I'm just going I'm just going for the ride. This is this is part of my journey. You know, I didn't even know I was going to be a mixed martial artist. You know what I'm saying? This, this just happened, and I'm just following the, the path of my life. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. And everyone fights for a different reason. Why do you fight? I fight because I've been fighting all my life, literally. And, um, you know, through, through my childhood to my adulthood, um, I've been fighting all my life, and that's the reason why I fight. I fight for people who can't, who can't fight, you know what I'm saying? Um, who don't have a, 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 a fighting chance out there. I fight, I fight for those people, you know what I'm saying? Um, 
people that I see out there struggling every day with um, uh, mental health illnesses and stuff like that. You know, um, that's my that's my reason for fighting. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and, and again, you know, um, if if you put your mind to anything in in life, you can you can do it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to be one of those guys that say, oh, I I could have did this, I could have did that, and and never tried it. I never tried to sport in my life. I didn't want to be one of those guys just to say that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying it, and I'm going to see it all the way through. You know what I'm saying? So I'm feeling I'm ready. Great words and great fight. Thank you. Congratulations. What's up? How you doing, Andrew Mack? I'm good. How are you? I haven't seen you in a bit. Glad to see the hair back. What's that? Glad to see the hair back. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. So in the past, you mentioned that like the Icon Valdina chant when you walk out, you almost drowned it out because you were so used to it. Now being a year out from it, and then happening happen again, how is that for your mentality? Is it uh, still just tuned out, or did that really hype you up again? Like it's before? never tuned out. I think I poker face it like it is tuned out, but I feel the energy. I really do. I don't, I don't, I don't just speak lies in these post-fight interviews in the cage saying like, oh, I feel the energy. I do. I feel these people. I feel them behind me and back of me, and I feel like that gives me energy to go out there and do my job. So it's never, uh, it's never drowned out or anything like that. I always feel it, and it was no different. It, it, just another, you know, day at home here. So where do you want to go from here? I just want to keep winning. I just want to keep putting in hard work with these, with these savages that I, I train with on a daily basis. Um, I want to help my other teammates get their dubs too. We just had a huge weekend. You know, Carlos Azoya just won the 125 belt for Combat FC. Nick Fiore got his dub as well. Um, this kid Freddie, he's an amateur. He just won a combat zone. Tom Pags came back and got a dub. We, uh, we're keeping the momentum going, guys, and uh, I just want to, you know, they all helped me with this fight, and I'm just going to keep returning the favor and get right back in the gym and keep working hard. And are there any games you want to call out for your next fight? Any opponents? Yeah. No, I'm good. All right, congratulations. Thank you. So I know you wanted to get your belt uh, back against Stu Fort. Of course, you went to PFL. Is it still as satisfying to get your belt back from a vacant fight against Bone? Yeah, 100%. I honestly don't know if any other fighter besides Bone or Dufort would have been as satisfying to win this belt. You know, especially being when I had missed weight against Bone the first time, uh, it really didn't count as a title defense. So it was just kind of that, that other notch that I needed in my career, you know, right in the W column. Um, perfect world, I could have got it back from Dufort, but he's off doing his thing. So I redeemed myself where I could, and here we are. And you were pretty close to getting to the Ultimate Fighter. They, like, you thought you were in, they just cut you. Did that give you extra motivation for this fight to really show off that you deserve to be on Ultimate Fighter? Yeah, man. You know, everybody that doesn't like me, everybody that's afraid to fight me took that as the opportunity to, like, bash my name because they knew I couldn't defend myself online. Um, you know, guys that have never been that close to the show don't realize how it works, and I couldn't talk about it. So, you know, those losers can keep saying my name to get people to click on their profile, and I'm going to keep collecting belts and show where I belong. How, like, or how soon do you want to fight next? When's the next card? <laughs> July? I'm not Ooh. asking and signing are two different things. <laughs> um, I'm healthy. I'm, I'm healthy, you know. I'm happy. Uh, I'm still broke, you know. I gotta go work. I got I got a wedding to pay for coming up. So uh, as soon as possible would be nice. But you know, I want to go celebrate and be with my family for a little bit too. And we saw Carl Esparza walk down the aisle with the belt. Are you gonna have your belt at your wedding? I, you know what's funny is my family would probably ask me to do it, and I would be the one that was like, no, nah, I'm not doing it. So, probably not. <laughs> she says no, but her family would. <laughs> All right, congratulations. Thank you very much. Did this fight go about as, the same as you predicted? Yeah, like I was saying, um, pretty much. I think he... Um, put up more of a fight than I expected. I thought he was going to come out strong for maybe a half a round, a full round. I thought he was going to die really fast after that. But, you know, he kept his uh, – he started to get tired. I could tell that. I started landing my jabs. I started landing my striking. Um, you know, but he, he stayed strong there till the end of the third. And I think eventually he just – he couldn't keep up, you know. And like I said, I, I've been there. I've done it. I was just getting stronger. Um, you know, I was ready to pick it up if I had two in the fourth and fifth and really start getting after it. Um, but credit to him, he lasted longer than I thought, but that's, that's pretty much how I thought the fight would go. Now, I couldn't tell if you were smiling or it was the shape of your mouth guard while you were fighting. What was it? I think I was smiling a couple times when he was throwing some kicks and some punches that maybe hit me a little bit. Just a little smile, let him know, like, you know, good shot, but that didn't hurt me, but I have more than that. And when you're, how many, many years your career goes, looking back on your career, what do you want this moment to represent in your career? 
hopefully the, 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 my last fight on the regional scene, hopefully that's what I look back and see as this, the, the fight that punched my ticket to the next level. So let, let's hope that's what it was. All right, congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right, let's roll. My Vera, event just ended, a me reflection. Wild. Honestly, like, yeah, there must be a full moon out tonight. <laughs> like, <laughs> I it, think so. It's just not even inside the cage. Like, there were so many things, like, just wild going on outside the cage. But, uh, you know, quick reflection is, is uh, you know, it's hard not to quickly reflect on the, the, the two, the double main event. I mean, Joe Gianetti said what he said leading up to this fight. Like, I'm going to make it quick and I'm going to finish him. And, and um, you know, after seeing their first fight, that was a back and forth war. You'd be hard pressed if you were a betting man to say, okay, we're going to probably see a lot of that action. Um, but he, he came out and did what he did best. And he grabbed that, as he said in the case, snatch next, cash checks. So I was, I was very impressed with how dominating a performance was that, that was. Um, I don't want to give Giannetti any like ammunition, but like I was <laughs> surprised. I mean, you know, I, he's been fighting with us for so long. So, you know, I, it just that was that was crazy because I didn't think he was gonna be that. Bones just been on an incredible run, so it just it just shows the the level of focus. And then the go back, and then I, I said both fights. Sorry, I'm just like in my head. I'm running these two fights now. So Giannetti, impressive, like to do that so quickly to Bone. No one does that to Bone. Yeah. Um, and then to go to the main event, like Jack Condon, like that guy, just like he was up against some, you know, big odds. I mean, he's only four and zero in his pro career, and. You know, a lot of talk was like he, it was too early for him, but he wanted to challenge himself. And I don't think his stock dropped at all after tonight's performances. You know, he had some great um, output. It, he, he looked like he was hurting Piersma. Um, and then you go to the Piersma, and it's just like he showed he can stand in the firefight, which people said he didn't have much stand-up. And he stood in the firefight, and he stood in the pocket, and he traded. Um, and he wobbled Jack a few times. And then, of course... You know, his dominant submission game and, and grappling is just insane. So, like, what's left for him? But anyways, there you go. There's my immediate quick one. <laughs> Nothing's quick with me. I know you're very proud to beat the promotion that for every single fighter. We have a bunch of debuts. We have two championship fights. This could be their last regional fight. Could you just talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I, I mean, I said in the cage, like, in some of the post-fight interviews, like, um, you know, we love these guys. They've grown up with us, and, they're in, you know, they're in our cage for so long. And we hate to see them go, but at the same time, we're very aware of what we are. Like, we're, we're a launch pad for them. They kind of get to achieve their goal of getting to the UFC, a lot of these fighters. So it's as much as we want to hold on to them and keep them, and we don't want to see them leave because we love the feeling of them being in this building, the atmosphere they provide, it's like, we, go, go, we got nothing more for you. Like, what more does the UFC need to see from you? Uh, so that's, that's kind of where I'm at with that. It's, it, it's, it's bittersweet. You know, if that's the last time we saw um, Gianetti, if that's the last time we saw Piersma, you know, you look back and look what Piersma's done in three fights. In January, he made his Cage Titans debut. And he's headlined the last two events on event cards that had guys like Gianetti and these other seasoned Cage Titans guys. So it's, it's, it's been tremendous. So, yeah, man, I, I, I hope these guys take the stage that we build and they jump off from here and hopefully they, they, they get to their big goals like Mitch Raposo. You know, we, 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 we honored him and he's fighting this upcoming Saturday. And, and it's like I said that to him in the cage when he won that title back in January. I hope this is the last time I see you, Mitch. And sure as shit, it was. And during intermission, you announced some awesome fights. The one that really caught my eye. Aaron Trussell, I think it was Kyle Hill, yeah. right? Aaron Bluey just fought yesterday. Did you have that sign before his fight, or was that right after? I will tell you this. You want the exact time? <laughs> I will tell you the exact time. And then you can go home and do the math. <laughs> so let's I'm see. Asian. I can do the math very easily. All right, so here we go. 9.27 last night. That's insane. Well. Wow. Yep. 9.27, 9.28, let's do it. And then I was trying, we were trying, I guess we were, uh, Louisiana wasn't planning on, or Louisiana, that's yep. the text message that his coach called him. But uh, <laughs> Earthquake, or Louisiana, whatever you want to call him, uh, they were trying to get him here because he wasn't planning, so he was trying to arrange some rides. He couldn't mm -hmm. come here tonight. Uh, but I already talked to Kyle Hill. I messaged them last night, and it was like, hey, let's do it. And uh, they were like, we're coming down the corner. So, yeah, man, it, it was 927. There's your answer.
Well, he fought, I think, at nine yesterday. So that's literally right after his fight. That's insane. Right after, you know, and and um, we knew that he was somebody that we were going to target for their next card. Um, so yeah, it, it just it kind of made sense. Kyle Hill was somebody we had targeted for our next card because his fight fell off that he was supposed to compete in last night. And we knew Brody McDougal was returning to Cage Titans on our next card because he took these, this one off. And they've had a long goal of having Kyle and Brody McDougal fighting on the same card. You know, they were roommates. I, I think they still might be. They're both, you know, budding prospects in the 170 division. They both train at Nostos. So they really wanted to fight together on the same card. So we were already trying to put that together for July. And then when Earthquake won, it just fell into my lap. <laughs> Congratulations on another great event. Thank you. Thank you so much.